the regular over-the-counter drugs that you know that no, this is off limits. If you don't have a uh, prescription, you can't get it. Does it make it more, a little more tricky if as little as cigarettes could be abused and then when that happens, people easily fall into this. So how can we, or what kind, what should we do about that particular case? Because regular over-the-counter drugs, you really will get people uh, abuse that as much f with as much frequency as you would drugs that are not OTC. What I think the government needs to do regarding government policies on substance use, things as simple as increasing the prices of those goods. Increasing the prices? Mm -hmm. Yes, the cost. The cost would probably discourage oh. a few people from going into it. One. Restrictions. I do not see any restrictions in this country that says so and so age are not permitted. Because from experience we know as young as 12, 13, they are abusing substances. And there are no regulatory bodies to ensure that this does not happen. Okay. We've got a question from uh, Mark. Yeah, I'm curious to know, what is your take on the legalization of cannabis in certain countries? We heard that the NDLEA uh, CG saying that, you know, we should fight it. Uh, but in some jurisdictions, we see that uh, their governments think that it is better to legalize it. What's your take as uh, one who counsels people who get addicted to these things? I would say legalizing marijuana use will make issues worse for us in Nigeria because we know that from experience, a lot of people who abuse marijuana, they are at an increased risk of developing mental illness. By mental illness, I mean what looks like schizophrenic illness. Yes. And we have not gotten to that place in this country where we need to use marijuana for medical purposes. So really, as much as possible, we should discourage it. A lot of people who come down with substance use disorder very commonly, majority of the population is marijuana abuse. And I just think we need to take a stand in this country and say a big no to that. Seeing the havoc that has already been created at this point, how much more when you legalize it? What happens? It gets worse. Hmm. Hmm. Tell us about, because I know that uh, some of these cases are sensitive to families. They don't like to make it public. Uh, people seem to be suffering in silence. Silence. What do we do about this? The theme of um, the World Drug Day today is um, listening first. Listen first. Listen yes, first. listen oh. first. It brings drug abuse back home. Hmm. Back home. Before anyone um, develops a drug use disorder, there are several factors in play. I don't know what my genetic vulnerability may be, so it's best advice, don't start drugs. You never know what it is in your family lineage that may predispose you to addiction. Beyond the biological factors, we have the social, we have the psychological. A lot of people come from dysfunctional homes. Things are not um, bright at home. Parents are not even there to observe what is going on. Most of the patients we get to see at Freedom Foundation, nobody, rarely do we see people who have been abusing substances one year before they met us. It's like they give a history of two, three years. The parents had no idea. These children, they have challenges. Academic issues in school, having to deal with peer pressure. Social media has not helped. But they want people to talk to. But a lot of parents, a lot of caregivers, are not available to do that. Our parents okay. encourage you. Sorry, sorry, but when okay, to break. Break. Uh, we'll be back in a moment. Don't go away. Welcome back. We still have Dr. Ndupu here. Uh, could you tell us uh, your foundation? W w what do you do? What kind of issues do you focus on? Because there's so many of this. Yes. Um, my foundation, which is Freedom Foundation, we are into trying to help the less privileged, and particularly my section, which is um, House of Refuge, is that arm that deals with drug and substance abuse, rehabilitation of people who are faced with the issues of drug abuse. We are a non-governmental organization, and we're also faith-based. 
in addition to that and over the years we have been able to help rehabilitate a good number of people beyond people who can pay for the services we're in the streets there we we help try to help a lot of people out there people you call junkies they live in the drug joints no family support no accommodation no likelihood of getting treatments so what we do we we, are, we get them to our facilities where we try to rehabilitate them it's been a long journey we've been doing this um, for over 11 years well, we actually started in 2006 and since then I would say the people on the streets we have come in contact and have tried to help over 250 while for the residential over over 134 mm. people have been helped with so, so do you think that our parents are encouraged to bring wards out that are facing this challenge to rehabilitation centers for instance that's the reason why we are here to talk about this gimba a lot of people do not even know centers are available and even for the few who know they are not sure where to get a proper center to get results there are a lot of centers you know i mentioned something about criminalizing drug use i have from experience seen that people are locked up in what looks like cells and um, that is believed by their parents to address the issue of substance use you can't take someone who is abusing substance and think you keep in solitary isolation confinement and then he comes out and you think he will not go back to drugs people don't even know what an effective treatment should be Beyond the person abusing substance, there are a whole lot of baggages they come with. The social issues, lack of family support, academic or dysfunctional, you know, work issues. So for rehabilitation to be, to be effective, you need, it needs to be holistic. It deals with this individual. This is the individual involved. We manage this individual based on who he is, what substance is abused, the family dynamics in addition to several things because that's only when you would say rehabilitation has will have a better outcome hmm. all right uh, I know a lot of people can relate to paracetamol uh, doctor says also when you you can also abuse paracetamol if you take it every morning without prescription mm -hmm. you could fall victim and you can that, also that got abuse thinking. coca cola yeah so I know that a lot of students they cannot have one Okay, meal without taking now, don't, get, don't get me more worried now. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Ogodna Ndupu is a uh, program director, Freedom Foundation, which uh, the House of Refuge part of that. She's also a consultant psychiatrist. Thank you for coming on this morning. Thank you for having me. Well, that's the show today. I wonder what happens to those who take their paracetamol with Coke. Oh, boy. <laughs> that's double trouble. Take it with water. Thank you for watching. Be an adjective water. I'm Gimba Omar. Well, thank you for watching. I'm Maokwe Ogun. Happy holidays to you.